Hi, everyone. Welcome to Beacons of Balance. <laughs> I'm Arlene. This is my wonderful co-host, Joanne. Hi, everybody. And our guest speaker, Isabel, who we'll introduce shortly. If it's your first time tuning in, thank you so much for being here. The channel is called Beacons of Balance. It's all about balance. We live in a world of duality, up, down, black, white, left, right. It's going to be that way. It's a chaotic world. And when, when, our, when we're off like this, we're totally out of balance. So we're bringing to you, because you matter, wonderful speakers that are going to share pearls of wisdom to help you on this journey so we're, we live in balance. So here we go. So speaking of amazing presenters, Joanne, can you share with us how you know our next speaker, Isabel? Oh, my gosh. Isabel, I believe I met you when we were teaching in a German podcast about Atlantis yes. and mystery schools. Was that Justin's? Yes, it was Justin's. Yeah. And we had so much fun. Oh, my God. You are a font of knowledge. I'm just, I just love you so much. The reason I love you is because you don't come from the woo-woo end of it. You're more of the scientific end of it. So most people mm -hmm. can't grasp, you know, you're into the heavy facts and stuff. So, but what I love about you is that a lot of people, I mean, a lot of people, I know Arlene and myself, we've all had like, like, does that way just really exist? You know, there are a lot of people that say, nah, that's just all pipe dreams. And then I just thought there's so many specials about it now on TV. Um, I just saw one last week. And of course, as you know, there's many theories as to where Atlantis is. Um, I think we talked about this on our podcast in Germany, that Plato was the one that kicked off a lot of the inspiration and wisdom and knowledge that it was through the Straits of Gibraltar. But beyond that, I think this is really cool that you have hypnotized over a thousand people to take them into a past life regression. That is a lot of work, girl. So hands <laughs> off to you on that one. And then you've studied quantum physics. Mm -hmm. It's like you're a trained hypnotherapist. You're an ascension teacher. I love that little thing that you call yourself. You're the cosmic cheerleader. I could just see you out there. Yeah. You look like so, a cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing that we all three of us have in common is that we all have this passion to move people forward. Now, Arlene has been doing a fabulous job. She owned an angel shop and where she brought millions together. And now here we are. Next step. We could get this out further in the world, right? Now, the other cool thing, Arlene, about our beautiful guest, she actually designed a deck for children. How cool is Ooh, that? Oh, I got chills on that. That's wonderful. For these children that are starting oh. to and um, intuitive, and it's the Magic Oracle deck. And I don't know if Bob helped you with that. My son. Bob or... did. Yeah. Was, yeah. He found the printer and he helped That's design wonderful. It. So everybody, we are thrilled beyond belief to have you. Uh, yes. I'm, thank like you. We're sisters from um, another lifetime. We totally. Well, we are probably all... from Atlantis. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, I've been, I was there too. Um, so Isabel, can you fill us in on how your journey began? How did you get into really into hypnosis? What brought you there? And then further on with the fascinating work that you're doing with um, the ancient, the mystery schools in Atlantis and doing past lives. I mean, that's a yeah. lot. A lot. It is a yeah. lot. So could you take so, us on your journey? Like we, I will you begin. Did Isabel come out of the womb and go, I'm oh. not hypnotized you now? <laughs> oh. Oh, boy. <laughs> spirit field. Totally left spirit field. Um, I was, uh, I am still a mom. I have a baby daughter who's 20. <laughs> no way. You look 20. I know you. Thank you. <laughs> you look twenty. Thank you. And um, married, um, and a career in IT and operations. And so, I love working in corporate America. I know a lot of people don't like working in an organization, but I loved it, and I was really, really happy. And what happened? And this. This really happens to a lot of us. Our spirit guides communicate through us, through physical pain. Well, so Louise Hayes 
will discuss emotional pain. So I'm sure your listeners, because spirit is already telling me, your listeners are already savvy that they know about emotional pain, that their body is a messenger, but they're not connecting it quite yet to your spirit guide, to your inner being. Because as soon as I say this, your girls, I know you girls are going to totally get this. If your spirit guide did not want you to have that physical ailment, it would be gone. Well, are they sickos? What's wrong with them? Yeah. It's all their fault. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm getting new spirit guides, okay? <laughs> well, your spirit guides would love for you to ask for help. You know, Arlene, that's what they're telling me, that angels must be asked. Yes. Okay. Yes. So if you are in physical pain, just know that it's for you. It's for you to stop and pause and examine why you're in pain. Now, I did not know this seven years ago. I did not. But now I'm a mad researcher. I'm channeling. I'm talking to guys. I'm talking to guys. Well, you know, I've been educated by many, many spirit beings. So what I would say is what happened, what occurred to me was I was writing a young adult novel called Unseen Light. From- that should have been a clue. Something was going on with me. But again, I did not connect the pieces. And I was writing about angels, fairies, and quantum physics. Those three subjects. Well, that's... (laughs) Yeah, usually don't hear those three together. (laughs) Right. Usually don't hear those three together. Um, And in this research of my novel because her father worked at the CERN Collider. In the research of this novel, I was researching angelic beings. Yeah. I'm a mad researcher, but I would go on Google Translate and I would read Russian websites and French websites and Polish websites and I am familiar that libraries around the world will have digitized manuscript that I could read. Um. So when I uncovered angelic beings, not just Christianity, I remember having this thought of, huh, I wonder if they're like not made of physical matter, but beings of light. Mm. But yeah. I wonder- I wonder if they're like ETs, like they're their own species and they're here to help us. Because every story I read with an encounter of an angel, they're always assisting. They're always helping and guiding. Huh. Angels are real. And that's how it kind of started. So meanwhile, at the same time, I had planters fasciitis. And if you ever had it, it's very painful Painful. to walk. Yeah. And I went to a cop that said, so what do you do for a living? And I said that. And he's like, oh, do you listen to podcasts? I'm like, listen to podcasts. I'm a podcast junkie. (laughs) I listen to like all sorts of stuff. And then he's like, and then I and then I told him about the book and he's like, oh, you should listen to Roberta Grimes. She's on Law of Attraction Radio. And I'm like, Law of Attraction Radio? What's that? And so I listened to Roberta Grimes and she was this lawyer interviewing doctors and scholars around the afterlife. And the afterlife it is the other dimensions. It's where... We exist on the other side and there's so many dimensions and there's an angelic realm and there's a fairy realm and, you know, and I went down the rabbit hole and I did work with a spiritual teacher for my own awakening and I was channeling very quickly, like three weeks, as soon as I signed up for the program 
and I channeled Goddess Isis for the first time. Wow. And that was May 8, 2017. And that still has been one of the most remarkable experiences, that first channeling, that first connection. Because I listened, it was at lunchtime, I was at work, and I went to my car and I played bilateral beats because I'm a very sciencey site. I had already started a practice of meditation using heart math, which is a biofeedback device. Right. And I had already started meditating and I went into a meditative state. And I remember feeling this pressure right between my eyes. And I remember like me talking to myself like, oh, my God, oh, my God, I'm having a physiological experience. And I'm like just breathe, just breathe, you know? And I'm like so excited that I'm feeling something physically. And then I saw like all this yellow energy and I'm like, like I'm like trying to calm down like a little kid in me. I'm like, just breathe, just breathe. And then I went and I went deep and I said, I would like to speak to my higher self. And I saw this face. And if you've ever seen a film negative, it was just like a film negative. It was like reverse. And I saw this face and she was beautiful. That no, one. And it was a flash, like so fast, but I could still draw it today. And I said, hello. And she said, hello, my child. And I said, what's your name? And I heard Iris. And I went, oh, I love the flower, irises. I've always loved irises. And I heard her say, no, I am goddess Isis. Ooh, I got and you. I got chills. I, got right. chills. Oh, yeah. I was in my car okay. and I got chills like on the top of my head down to my toenails. Like my like when somebody says a full body chill, I like I've experienced it. It's the weirdest thing because it's like, yeah. There's no way my feet could like have chills. Like, do you know what I mean? It was like, oh, we, we call it the wave. Yeah, we know. We call it the wave. Like, yeah, the wave. It was so much a wave. And then I wrote, I had a notebook next to me and I wrote my first channeled message and I went to my mentor, my spiritual mentor. And I said, did I just channel? And now I do that for a lot of people now. So it's my honor. But <laughs> um, did I just channel? And then... You know, he wrote back like, yes, you did. And then that was it. I was connected to Goddess Isis. I wouldn't allow any other entities to come in. And the second entity that I allowed was Thoth. Mm -hmm. And Thoth is from Atlantis. And Thoth had taught Goddess Isis magic. And what? I wouldn't let Thoth in. And I just wouldn't. I just said, I was just like a newbie. I was just like, no, I got my girl. I got goddess Isis. I'm That's good. all I need, right? That's all I need. Yeah. Well, and thought kept on like, like wanting to talk to me. And I would hear love songs in my car. I would go to the grocery store and there would be a love song. I would come down from my cup of coffee and Ken would be watching TV and there would be a love song. Oh, wow. And for three weeks, he sent me love songs and signs and synchronicities. And Goddess Isis was like, she was saying, it's okay to talk to Thoth. And I was just like, no, I don't want to talk to Thoth. So finally, after three weeks, I relented. And I talked to Thoth from Atlantis and he felt like like two intense pressure points here well, and, and I felt all this love for me and he started my education wow along with Isis and many 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 guides now and Archangel Michael I wouldn't be here without him and Jesus I wouldn't be here and Raphael I've been so blessed I've been so blessed all the big boys <laughs> I know. When, when I found out that goddess Isis was one of my inner beings, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm always called like the granddaughter of Isis, and um, I remember like being like really kind of shell shocked, and I'm like, "Who am I? <laughs> what is Where going on?" 
And I was so upset. Like, I remember those early days. I remember like, really? The, the daughter of Leo and Francoise Rohatch, born in Chicago, Illinois? Like, what? I'm like, this is not normal. Like, it did. It really did freak me out for a bit. Like, I had to... Like now I've I've embraced it. You got me seven years later. I've graduated college. So, (laughs) but if you had spoken to me as a freshman, I would tell you I was panicked and scared. (laughs) It's it's like, why me? Why me? Yeah. I mean, the answer I always get is because, child, you will do the work. Yeah. That's why. Not so, everybody yeah. follows through with this, as you know. I hate to be Boom. the one to interject. I don't know what's happening, what time today is, like, flying. We have so much. There. Yeah, look at the time. We right. got to get you back, Isabel. We got to get limited. you back. No, we're not ending here. Oh. Wow. Okay. Let's, you know, because we only have, I should have said this in the beginning. We we do this like a half hour, 40 minutes the most. And we could talk for yeah. four hours. Um, There's so much to cover. We need 10 shows. Seriously. Exactly. You'll have to come back. We can do a series. Like, can you mind. tell us what um, were some of your most interesting, in a nutshell, kind of, we, we, I know, I hate to say it, to kind of shut That's all right. a little bit, what was the most interesting um, regression you've had um, from your clients, the most interesting one um, mm-hmm. that even gave you an aha <laughs> to it? So actually, I'm going to share, there's so many. I'm sure. But I'm going to share the one that is still available to listen to on my podcast. My first aha moment was my coworker, Casey, and Ashlam was his higher self. And that aha moment, you, we hear his past life regression where he was um, a pilot for Pan Am and an empress food taster. And um, when he was um, the Empress of China food taster, she was foraging for fruit and a tiger attacked her. And Ashlam, the higher self, said, wasn't that brilliant? And I'm <laughs> like, what? And, and Ashlam said, I put the tiger there to get her out of her comfort zone wasn't that brilliant. And that was my really aha moment that our spirit guides and higher self, your higher self, which is you, really will do anything to get your attention. And even a tiger. And I was just like, whoa. But I've had so many remarkable sessions. Um, Atlantis, I know this is the topic of Atlantis, but there's two favorite Atlantinian stories that I want to share. One of them was with the flood. One of them was a healing I had, that I had to do. I got a wall of water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah. can't swim. I can't swim. I've had a, we've had a boat. I had pools, you know, which I like water, but I, I and I sink. I don't know. But. So the flood really did occur. Yep. Noah, a lot of people don't know this, but Noah was from Atlanta. Oh. So he was the one who was building the ark. So at the time of the fall of Atlantis, a lot of the Atlantinians were aware that they could not save Atlanta. Right. And there was you know, oh my gosh, so many sessions from Atlantis, but one crying because she couldn't save the crystals, one Mm -hmm. with the drowning, always afraid of the water, Um, just the remorse from that. And then some beautiful lives from Atlantis. And I remember my Atlantinian lives and we were in oneness and we had everyone who goes to Atlantis, describes it the same way, the same way. I think I've had about 15 sessions of them. Mm -hmm. So the same way they'll say, it's vibrant, it's pulsating, it's a crystal city. Every one of them will talk about the crystal city and they'll talk about the love 
and the oneness and the magic and the abilities that we were able to do and how we taught our children. And it's delightful, just delightful. And the waters and how we would sing to the waters and how we would eat together and how we would live, how we even grew a vineyard in the center of the city. It was a magical, beautiful place. And that is what we're returning to. We're returning back. Do you remember it being in concentric circles? Because this show is all about balance. And to me, they were one of the most balanced cultures. They were. So there are many sites of concentric. So that concentric circle was, Mm -hmm. I would say, the hub. But just like um, there are many Americans across the United States, in Germany, in France, there were many satellite colonies of Atlantinians around the world. True. This is why when someone says, oh, Atlantis is in Florida. Oh, Atlantis is in the Middle East. Oh, Atlantis is here. Well, they're yep. all right. Because there was many colonies. Oh, okay. They're Atlantinian, right? Yeah. And so we'll, we'll uncover them. Very interesting. Where was the capital of Atlantis, though? <laughs> Where would, would you say that the... I think the capital was really by the Mediterranean. I mean, that's my sense. You mean like Crete or near Greece? Yeah. 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 Uh, Because every time I see Atlantis or visit Atlantis in the sessions, Mm -hmm. that weather seems to be very prominent in the flowers. And you can still see the same flowers today. So if I was going to be an archaeologist, I would kind of piece that together based on the fauna and flora. Um, But, you know, the earth was different and there was different names. Yeah. I know Plato always thought it was through the Straits of Gibraltar. You know, I think when we taught in uh, Germany, I held an old ancient map up. But then a lot of people swear it's, you know, Cyprus, you know, so... But like you said, and now it makes sense now. There's all these satellites, and look how many pyramids they're finding now under the ocean, blowing my mind. Yes. So the ocean with the Great Flood, and that's still in our collective memory yeah. of the Great Flood. And um, so Spirit has said that we'll find Atlantis because it's just 300 feet underneath water. Yeah, it's not deep. Got the technology. Wow. Yeah. To do it. Wow. Yeah. But, you know, balance. um, So uh, we're we're in the grand ascension. And finding balance is really important. Like, really important. It's like, it's not a nice to have. It's a must have. I'm getting chills on that. Maybe that's why I was guided. The, the seed was planted to call this beacons of balance. It, I mean, this is why we're doing what we're doing. It's it's to help awaken humanity. It's our passion now. Mm-hmm. The more people we can reach, the better. Yes, you know. Yes. So, so in those beginning stages of balance, we start off with mindfulness, or exercise, or nature or developing creativity, Uh and we start off very gentle. But you will be asked to go a little deeper because we are in the grand ascension. Right. And the balance is the light and the dark. It is the duality (laughs) and the polarity. Yeah, I get chills. Oh my God. <laughs> it's the polarity. So I I really don't use the word duality myself. Mm-hmm. I use the word polarity because it allows me to help the person drop the judgment right. of hot and cold. It is two different poles. You have hot and you have cold. Yeah. And in the center is the warm. And the balance is in the center. But the cold is not evil or bad or right or wrong. Right. 
And the heart is not evil or bad or right and wrong. It is a spectrum of vibration and frequency. Hallelujah. (laughs) And look what we were taught all those years. Everything is bad, evil, when it just just is. That's how you're saying that because our logo, which came to me, and Joe, I called Joey and I said, I hate to do this to you, but could you just put something up really quick? She goes, Arlene, sketch something out. What you said, oh, I can't draw a straight line. If you ever saw what I, I did, but I had the beacon, uh, the lighthouse with the beacon, the heart in the thing. And then we have a justice scale. And I had the words were in my head, see your darkness, honor your light. And it's about choice. And mm-hmm. that's what it was, you know? It is. So you're confirming. Thank you. It is. And so it's very counterintuitive. But in order for our species to shift consciousness, you must embrace the darkness right. and shine the light in the darkness and forgive yourself and love yourself. And then you can allow yourself the choice. Because right now, a lot of us respond in fear, Mm -hmm. with anger, hate, judgment, control, greed, destruction, power above. Those are the dark polarities of the light. Dark moon. And so when you look at it and you accept it as part of the polarity, then your awareness, you can start to choose. If you say, I only want to choose the light and not look at the dark, you will be forced to look at the dark. Right. Because we are in the grand ascension. This This is a different life. This is a different life. This is not the same. Uh This is not the same life that we've lived for thousands of years, guys. And people need to hear this. Isabel, what you're saying is, uh, listeners, please listen what she's saying. This is so important. We are not, and many of us that are older say, we want to go back. We want the simpler time. no. We are you not going go back. back. We're going forward. And we're going, you have to go forward. And it's uncomfortable because it's change, but change is life. Yeah. Change is move. You learn is in those dark moments. That's when the lessons come up. That's how we grow. If your life was hunky-dory and you were this little princess. That's right. And, and so the earth it, school. it is the earth school and it is about um, soul growth and wisdom. Yeah. And, you know, the work that I do, I do very deep soul work through hypnosis. And, you know, I've been asked to create the school of ascension healers because your fears, 90% of your current fears expressed in your life today is from your other aspects of self or your past life. Right. And this must be healed. And a lot of that fear is held in the kidneys, you know, a different, so you got to watch. That's kind of crazy. Right. Right. So I often tease, I often say, you can stop blaming your mom and dad. Right. (laughs) Your fears go way back. (laughs) Oh, the contracts we hold, right? Right. I did what? Right. And there's Arlene always, and I always laugh. We always said, you know, when Creator said we need some volunteers, everybody else stepped backwards. We were drinking our dirty martinis. Yeah. <laughs> and there's our little guy like, like yeah. right. you're all fun. Thank you. It's going to be rough. Oh, Joanne. It was so funny. I talked to Goddess Isis the, uh, like two, two, three weeks ago because even this density gets to me, you know? Yeah. And I, I said to her, I said, Goddess Isis, I think we made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so that's an important. Wrong. One thing I want to ask you, personally, you, Isabel, what do you do for yourself? 
to balance? So personally, what I do for myself is I really, I go to the gym and I really listen to music and I kind of like um, move the energy in my body. I am very aware that you have to move your body during this ascension. This, this is, it's not about weight loss. It's not about strength. It's literally moving the energies because their energies are so much. Something's so much. <laughs> it's a lot. It is a lot. So like, you know, however you want to move, right? I mean, I just, you know, I, I go for walks all the time. But for me, just putting my earbuds in and just going on the elliptical and just moving my body kind of like just grounds me. Yeah. Um, I meditate. Every day. I mean, yes, I'm channeling. So um, it's a it's a must for me. But, you know, I have Mm -hmm. my morning coffee and I have two Oreos and I play a little soda crush in the morning and then I take out my little notebook and then I'll channel or I'll process my own fear. You know, one of the four lesson for me is I'm not enough. So yeah. I have to work on that limiting belief a lot, me personally. I also have to be really careful because like I'm a people pleaser extraordinaire. And I have to remind myself, no one's victim. Everyone's powerful warriors right. of light. They just forgot. They just forgot. Yeah. It's okay. And, um, you know, and now, so those self acts, um, I also will eat um, steak every once in a while to like really ground me. Yeah. Because I need that grounding because I'm channeling all the time. Yeah. Um, and I try to remind myself not to take it so seriously. Right. Or don't take it personally. Number one, don't take it personally. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. <laughs> Joanne, anything else that you want to hit on? Because we're going to. Oh, my God. Yeah, I know we're wrapping up here, but uh, just have to have you back. (laughs) You're doing. Thank you for your contract. I honor you for who you are and what you're doing. Thank you. Not everybody. um, Hey, there. Need the call, you know. Yeah. So um, my my uh, tagline is answer the call. Connect to your guides. This (laughs) life matters. And I have a free starter kit on attractingwisdom.com. Sure. And that starter kit, yes, it's um, how your guides communicate with you, uh, a PDF, and a little bit about me, and, and examples, because I'm always trying to teach in a fun way. Sure. And then there's a guided meditation, a beautiful guided meditation, about 10 minutes, going into a magical forest and connecting to the tree of wisdom. And then after that meditation is an assessment, because a lot of people cannot recognize when they hear or when they have a connection to spirit, their spirit guide. Mm -hmm. And so there's an assessment form that you have that you can take so that you can recognize that indeed you do connect with your team. That's That's amazing. Well, thank you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much. You come back. (laughs) Absolutely. Uh, There's so much to cover. Well, yeah, it's it's wonderful. So I want to thank our audience for watching, listening. Get out of your heads. Drop into your hearts. Um, Remember who you are. We're all beautiful beacons of light. Shine your light out there for everyone and connect, connect. And as Israel said, we say Look at your darkness, honor your light, and make your choices. And it's all about love. I say, it's all about love. I know. That heart. Joanne? Don't forget to subscribe. Get the likes. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) And now we're on all the social networks. So we have a Facebook page dedicated to Beacons of Love. We're going to grow. This is going to, we're taking this all over. Yeah, we want to grow. We want to grow. We're growing this way. We want to grow. <laughs> we're expanding. We yeah. have to spread it from here. We know oh. about Jupiter. Right? That was her. Oh, the Oompa Loompas. I love it. Oompa Loompa Show. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Well, thank you so much. And we'll have all your information posted below. So mm-hmm. anybody contact Isabel. And, um, and we will have you on again.
Yes, so awesome. Thank you for taking your time. All right, you're welcome. You. Bye, Bye, everyone. Love you. Bye-bye. 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 B